What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, I am gonna show you how to color grade your D-Log footage you shot on your Oslo Pocket 3 at nighttime within Adobe Premiere and CapCut. However, these techniques also apply to any video editor you are working in, so let's jump into it. Okay, so now we are in Premiere Pro, and as you can see, I have already brought in some nighttime shots. I shot one of my Oslo Pocket 3. This first set here is with the ProMist filter. Really love the footage I was able to capture with the ProMist filter at nighttime. And then I have just some nighttime shots I shot at New York. And then I also have some blue hour shots that I was able to capture in Charlotte. And I'm gonna show you how to color grade all of this footage. So the settings I was using on my Oslo Pocket 3, I was shooting at 24 frames per second in 4K, and I was also shooting in D-Log because I wanted to maintain the most latitude between the highlights and the shadows. And also shooting D-Log is going to allow me to be able to color grade this footage with inside all these different softwares. And I am going to get the best results because I did shoot in a log profile on my Oslo Pocket 3. Okay, so as I mentioned, these clips here were shot with my ProMist filter and that does add a whole nother factor when color grading. Because the ProMist filter makes everything a little bit softer, you do have to add a little bit more sharpness when color grading footage that was shot at nighttime with the ProMist filter. So the first thing I am going to do is create an adjustment layer. So I'm going to go new items, adjustment layer. And now I'm going to pop this adjustment layer over top of my existing footage here. And we are going to start with this clip here. So this is just a simple clip of an apartment complex downtown. So as you can see, it is nothing great right now, but we are going to really take this and transform this footage into something that's looking amazing. So after clicking on the adjustment layer, I am going to go up to Lumetri Color, and this is going to bring up my color panel. So within here, this is where I'm going to be able to make all the adjustments to my footage. So the first thing I'm going to start with color temperature and I am going to bring the color temperature down a little bit. I am going to make this footage look a little bit more blue. So you can see just a quick before and after, nothing crazy, but I am adding a little bit more blue into my footage. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add an S curve. So S curves are incredible because this can really add a lot of contrast to the footage. And when you're shooting in D-Log, it is a flat profile and it is squishing all the highlights and shadows together. So adding an S-curve is really gonna stretch it out and that is what I'm gonna show you right now. So I am gonna start with my shadows, which is gonna be the bottom half of this curve here. So we're just gonna pull this down a little bit and as you can see, it's bringing down all my shadows. But now we are losing a lot of the highlights. So I'm gonna come up to the top of the curve and I'm gonna add a new point here and I'm gonna bring some of the highlights back into it. And as you can see, if I turn this on and off, it really is just adding a lot of contrast to my footage and it is reintroducing that contrast back into the log profile. Okay, perfect, that's starting to look really great. I am gonna add a little bit more saturation back into this shot here. So let's go with 115, that's starting to look good. And this shot now does look a little bit darker than when I shot it. So I am gonna bring up the exposure hair Maybe I'll bring it up one full stop. When I toggle my adjustment layer on and off, you can really start to see the difference as this is having on my footage. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to creative. And as I mentioned, because this was filmed with a ProMist filter, a ProMist filter is gonna soften your footage a little bit. So we're gonna bring that sharpness back into it right here in post. So I am going to go to the sharpen tab and I'm going to just bring this up a little bit, probably around 20%. That's starting to look really good right there. Next, I'm going to go back into my curves and I'm going to click on the blue curve. And I do want to introduce some blues into the shadows here. So I'm going to add a point in the middle and now I'm going to just grab the shadows a little bit and lift the blues. And as you can see, it's starting to eliminate that yellow color we have and it's introducing a lot more blues into my footage. Hue versus saturation is pretty cool because if there's any color that I wanna bring the saturations up in or if I wanna bring the saturation down in, I can select that color and do so here. So we are gonna bring the blues up a little bit. So I added a point there and a point there just so I have the whole blue spectrum. And as you can see, if I bring this up, it's gonna bring a lot of saturation into our footage. And if I bring it down, we're gonna lose a lot of that blue color saturation. So I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. I think that's starting to look good. And again, you can toggle this on and off to see what the effect is doing to your footage. 
And next I am going to go to the yellow. So I'm just going to do at two points where the yellows are. And if I bring it up, I can see I am selecting a lot of those yellows in the lobby area there. And I want to eliminate some of the yellows. So I'm just going to bring the saturation of the yellows down a little bit. And now if I toggle this on and off, you can start to see a little difference that it is making. So when shooting at blue hour, I really like to have my blues lined a little bit more towards the purple. And that is what we're going to do here. So this is the hue versus hue tool. So if I select my blues again, if I bring them up, it's going to go through the whole color wheel and it's going to allow you to shift the colors of that blue. As you can see, this is very dramatic and we're just going to shift it down a little bit to introduce a little bit more purples into the sky there. And I think that looks really good before and after. I'm starting to really like that shot. Now the hue versus the luma panel is really cool because this is going to control the brightness and the outlook of every individual color here. So if I really want to make those blooms pop, which I captured with the ProMist filter, I can come down here and I can select the yellows and I can bring them up a little. And you can see that the yellows are going to bloom a little bit more now, which is a really great effect. And again, a lot of video editing softwares have all these very same panels and they follow the same kind of structure. So whether you're working in Premiere, CapCut, or DaVinci Resolve, you're going to be able to get a similar effect in each one of these programs. So now if I toggle this on and off, you could really start to see the before and after. And it's truly impressive what you're able to do with the log profile on the Osmo Pocket 3. I know it is shooting 10-bit color, so we are getting a large color depth within the footage. So we really are able to manipulate that color, bring it into post. So let me just play this back. And as you can see, this footage is looking amazing. I love how the blooms are starting to look on this footage and it really looks great. It really has a glowing blue hour effect and that's kind of the effect I was going for with this footage. So again, I'll toggle this on and off. And because I was working with an adjustment layer, I can just drag my adjustment layer over and it's gonna to apply to all the following footage as well. So I can play this clip and as you can see, it added this same effect to the close-up shot of this neon sign that says the park. And if I toggle it on and off, you can see the before and after. Now, if you did want to make some micro adjustments to the individual's clips, you can just click on the individual click itself and then you come in here and bring up the exposure if you want to bring it up, if you want to add a little bit more contrast or bring down the contrast. Really, it is limitless possibilities and you just have to go with the look that you're trying to achieve. So I am going to bring up the exposure a little bit in this park shot here. I think that's starting to look really great. This clip is looking amazing. I love how all the yellow lights are blooming in this shot and it really gives me that blue yellow effect, which looks incredible, especially when using the ProMist filter at nighttime on the Osmo Pocket 3. However, I do know we did bring down the saturation in the yellows and in here, I kind of want to bring back the yellow. So I am going to just cut my adjustment layer, bring that over, click on this adjustment layer up here and I am going to go back into the curves and I am going to bring the saturation of the yellow up and also bring the luminance of the yellow up a little bit just to really emphasize the glowing effect I was able to capture in this shot here. And I think that's starting to look really great. And as you can see, it's applying it to the next clip as well. And this clip doesn't need much work at all. However, I would go in here and maybe bring the shadows down just a hair and then bring the exposure up a little bit. As you can see, it didn't do much, but it's really just adding that extra punch to the footage here. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you color grading on some footage that I took in New York City, and this footage here was not used with a Promis filter. This is just footage shot at nighttime with my Osmo Pocket 3. So to start, I am going to just bring this adjustment layer, which color graded the other footage as well and see what that's starting to look like. As you can see, it's already starting to look great. I could toggle this on and off and we are getting a lot of really nice colors at nighttime here. So let me play through this clip to see how this looks. That look, clip looks great. This clip looks great. One thing I am noticing because there are some bright lights in here, I am going to bring the highlights down a little bit just to cool down those highlights and make it a little more even. We can also bring the contrast down a little bit by going into our curves, selecting on the overall curve and then just bring up the shadows a hair and bring the highlights down a little bit. It's starting to look really great. Let's see how it looks on this last clip here. 
Now this last clip here I know was shot very, very dark. This was 9 p.m. at night, so we didn't have much light in the sky. And I am always impressed with the low light capabilities of the Osmo Pocket 3, so it did a great job at capturing this. We may just have to add a little bit more exposure to this shot. Let's bring up the exposure a little bit, and then we'll just bring down those highlights, and that's starting to look really great. You can see the before and after right here. So next, let's just grab this adjustment layer and bring this over to our blue hour footage. So here is what our blue hour footage looked like with no lot or no color grading to it. As you can see, it still looks really amazing. I love shooting at blue hour because the sky is pretty even with all the buildings around it and the yellow colors just pop on the blue sky. It really is a great time to film with your Ozzo Pocket 3. But let me just add this color grade right here that we used from before. And honestly, this is looking really great. However, when it comes to skin tones, because I did introduce a lot of blues and skin tones, in my opinion, don't look the greatest when you're introducing a lot of blues and purples. So I'm gonna go back into my curves tab here and we are going to select the blue and just bring this back down so it's a little bit more on the yellow side. And then also we are gonna change the color temperature of hair and introduce a little bit more yellow than blue. I think that's starting to make me look a little bit more natural in my skin tones. But as you can see, these shots just look absolutely incredible. Awesome, so that is color grading within Adobe Premiere. As you can see, I was able to really transform that footage I shot with the Osmo Pocket 3 at nighttime, and it's starting to look amazing. I do primarily use Adobe Premiere as my editor of choice. However, I know this is not a free software, so I am gonna show you how to color grade your footage within CapCut next. So let's jump into CapCut. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these editors are going to have the same looking panel. So really whatever you're doing in one, you're going to be able to do and copy in another editor. So let me just take this first clip here, which was shot in my D-Log profile on my Osmo Pocket 3. It's a good starting point. And the first thing I am going to do is I am going to make an adjustment layer. So if you grab this arrow here and you click on adjustment, click that plus sign and it will bring an adjustment layer into CapCut. And I am going to just drag this over my whole clip, very similar to what we did in Adobe Premiere. And now you can see I can make all my adjustments on this adjustment layer within CapCut and I could do the same thing where I could drag it over all my footage and it's going to apply that look to, and it is going to apply that look to all the footage directly below it. So let me click on my adjustment layer and again, we're just going to make this footage a little bit more blue, bring up the exposure of hair, click on curves, and we're gonna add that famous S curve, which I love to talk about. It really is impressive how much footage can change by just adding a simple S curve. Now we're gonna go back over to basics, bring our saturation up, bring a little bit more contrast in there, and then I do wanna sharpen this again to around 20%, just because I was shooting with that Promus filter, which really softens the footage. And now we are gonna go back into our curves and CapCut does do it a little bit different where they already break the curves into the different red, green, and blue curves. So you don't have to rotate in between one panel. So I am gonna take my blue and I am going to introduce a little bit more blues into my shadows. And then their HSL is a little bit different too. So if I click on here, you can see when I click on each individual color, instead of having a curve, it really is just a slider. So if I grab my blues here, I can grab that and I can see what my saturation is and what it is going to affect within my image. And I know it's going to affect a lot of my image, so I'm going to bring the saturation up a little bit. But as I mentioned, I like to push my blues at blue hour towards purple. So I am going to just grab this and drag it over until I get an image that I'm starting to like, and that's starting to look good. And then I want to take the purple and I'm going to drag this over more towards the blues. And honestly, this is starting to look great. And if you toggle V on and off, you can see your before and after. So that's starting to look really great. I'll make this full screen and play it back and I'm getting a very similar shot as to what I was able to get inside Adobe Premiere. Again, I could just take this adjustment layer and I could drag it across all my footage and it is gonna affect all the footage below. So I have this shot here of the apartment complex. I was able to quickly color grade and then I automatically go into the shot of the park, the neon signs here. 
And it's truly impressive what you're able to do within CapCut. I'm always impressed with CapCut because it is a free software. Awesome, well thank you guys. As you can see, you could really make your footage pop within Premiere and CapCut. If you want to take this a step farther, you can kind of color grade in DaVinci Resolve. Check out my video on color grading on DaVinci Resolve right here. Please like and subscribe to my channel because you know it helps my channel grow. Until next time, peace.